What is happening here? <laughs> well, we're about to find out. You see, this is my Wulstick Chiara, Melissa Brianne, and she was a rescue back in the day. She's been doing beautifully up until spring of 2023, where I'm like, hello, where are your blooms? And her spikes were all caught within the growths. So of course I cut them off because it was pointless. The three little blooms that came out of her spikes, they were not here nor there. And this is the first time I've seen this behavior. Besides that, I take comments and feedback very seriously in my videos and where I can, I will always take them on board. And if I notice something similar, of course my little alarm bells are ringing. I think we have such a case right here. The comment of Tom Furby is what I'm going to put up on the screen because he was the one that made me aware of pest issues in pots that can cause problems for orchids. I have never experienced that in my collection and I have little creepy crawlies in most of my pots and my orchids are growing and blooming according to clockwork. But there is no such thing as a general rule in the orchid hobby and I may just have come up against a scenario as per Tom Furby. So thank you for joining me. At least I hope that you're as curious as I am and I will see you on the other side of the intro. It's good to have you here. Now, if you're saying, oh, well, that is so clear as day, it's scaled, it's crawlers, etc. I would say absolutely yes. She has been treated throughout the entire season with garlic alcohol. They would go away, then they would come back. That is not normal behavior for scale. When I treat with garlic alcohol, with the exception of my telumnias, but when I treat with garlic alcohol, I normally get every kind of attempted infestation under control, and then the orchid can grow as per usual. Not so with this one. So something else is going on. And I conclude that because since her rescue, she has never given me the concertina leaves. Excited to get into this pot. I couldn't do it sooner because normally, normally, under any normal conditions, her new growths do not grow new roots until they're a little bit larger. And you saw how desiccated the pseudobulbs are. So there's not much energy left in her in order to perform. Anyway, jibber jabber aside, Okay, let me just show you if I can focus in on this little cretin. I have many of these in many of my pots and those orchids are absolutely fine. So whatever they are, I can't identify them. <laughs> I tried Googling, but to no avail. But anyway, those little ones don't bother me. But this, we just have to see what's in this pot. A lot of dead roots, but we also have a few new ones starting. So I'm going to be ooh, 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 enjoying this so very, very much. Oh, thank you. The right timing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Knowing your orchids is half the secret of successful, be it rescue or intervention or whatever you want to call it. I knew that if I went in too soon, we would be in serious trouble, but we're not, we're not. We're on our way. So this is great because it's going to be radical and there's even more. Wait a minute, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let me bring you in closer because for me, this is going to be satisfying, but to watch it happen, maybe it'll have the same effect on you. And besides that, if my eyes miss any little detail of something crawling that I didn't see, well, point that out. Let me know in the comments. I'm always, always eager to hear what your findings are in a case like this. So it's clear. <laughs> we are starting from scratch. Look at this. That's what I was doing when I thought, hey now, wait a second. And I brought you in closer. I'm just trying to get the pieces apart. As simple as that. <laughs> Look at that, it's really bad. Anyway, so the next thing I'm going to do is take off all these back bulbs right here. And yes, this is concerning. I only have one skinny little bulb left after this. However, that is what we're going to do. And we're going to hopefully get her to grow. Well, we're starting from scratch and we're going to get her to grow better. She may not bloom for us in 2024. I may not let her, but at least she'll still be in the collection. Now, I have my really big secateurs here 
but these root tips are vital. So I'm kind of like, eh, don't really want to use these big ones, but it's kind of a tough rhizome. And we did that pretty well. Let's lay you aside. And let's look at this. It is. Mm. This is a different league of scale because that's what I think it is, but it's different. It doesn't behave the same way to what I am accustomed to. Right. Here we have another one. Same scenario. Got new roots starting. I don't see anything crawling though. There's one root right there. I can be very careful. I don't see anything crawling in here. So correct me. If you see something, correct me. So I'm just going to start with this one. Pseudobulb by pseudobulb. Just to get all the interferences out of the way so I can see better. <laughs> where my secateurs are going. This one's got a little bit more of a tight growth habit. I don't see anything wrong in the pseudobulbs. There's nothing there that would pique my attention and go, oh, oh. You know, one of my favorite colors is purple, but not when it comes to orchids. So can I just pull you apart? Or are you going to you see this tiny little orchid has quite the tough rhizome. So we're going to do this and hopefully not compromise anything that we've got growing. There we go. Ha! Right. Nope, there's nothing sus in this rhizome either. So one more little twirly twirly. Do you see anything crawling? Because I do not. Hmm. In a way, I'm really glad, but it doesn't answer my question why she did what she did. So I'm going to wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, normally now I would be painting all the structures here with garlic alcohol, but I am more tempted to get any gunk off so that I have a clear visual once everything dries out where I can paint and protect whatever is left here from any more beasties starting to accumulate. Because if they persist, then this orchid won't be around that much longer. There's not anything here to work with. So we'll just clean her up and then off camera later when she's dry there will be a little bit of a garlic alcohol paint job. But what we can do is get rid of some of the bracts here and hopefully stop any kind of hidey holes. But you know what? Even these bracts are tough. Dang. For such a weak orchid, she's a tough little one with everything that she has to offer. And for that reason, I do split down the middle, makes it a little bit easier to peel off and I go in the direction of its growth, which is a little bit more difficult when we come to the part that is tucked in between the new growth and the back pseudobulb. Yikes. I'm going to protect that though. We need that pseudobulb. I don't need anything popping off and just cut it off. It leaves a little bit of a hidey hole down there, but definitely minimized the situation compared to what it was before. It's so strange that at the beginning of the season I was looking forward to these gorgeous fragrant blooms because they, you know, sort of bring in the spring and I was like, come on, come on. She's been so reliable. And then suddenly this weirdness happened. And the spike just pretty much just stayed down here and the blooms then bloomed in here. And that is not normal. And since then, she's not really been performing as well as what I'm used to. So we've got that cleaned up. There's still some life left in this leaf. I'd like to keep that. Every little helps. I'm just going to pull off the old velamen because this orchid is going to need a support C or C. So whatever debris we can get rid of, that's what we're going to do.
Now I could go in here with cinnamon, would be best practice, but it is extremely warm today and it will be for another few days. It's also very dry, don't have humidity at the moment, so I don't have to go into the whole cinnamon malarkey thing. But to get them into their pot, here comes the fiddle. If I had found creepy crawlies, again, please let me know in the comments if you've seen any. If I had found some form of infestation that was really sus to me, I had my bleach solution already prepared to stick what's left of the orchids into a bleach bath, but I don't see anything. So I'm gonna just protect those roots, get her into a pot, and hopefully we won't have this issue again. Now, first of all, one step at a time, because fiddle. First of all, what I'm going to do is secure the two pieces to each other because I don't want abrasions on the little root tips. Securing them while they're not together to a support, ugh, it's not gonna work. I may forfeit one root tip, but if I try to do this right at the support straight away, I think I'm going to fail. I'm trying to keep them very, very level at the base, like that. And that was the root tip I was concerned about, but if we mess that up, then hopefully the others will just continue to grow. Let's see if we've gauged that correctly before we pinch it off. And because we have no roots, I need that loop just to bring the humidity up higher. Well, we have roots, let me qualify that. Because I don't have any roots reaching into the pot, there's no depth at all. All right, wish my orchid luck. I want to do this only once. What I'm trying to achieve here is to be as low as where the pseudobulbs are, because if she loses a leaf, and I use a leaf as a support, that's not going to last very long. And she may just lose leaves, because in the process of growing a new growth with very little to work with, she's going to be absorbing energy from the back, and there's not that much there to work with. And this is hopefully only temporary, because once the roots go into this pot, which is two times smaller than what she was in before, she will root herself in very, very quickly. So we're thinking positively. As we don't have roots in the pot, we don't need water either. Just a little gentle pour of fresh lecker. <laughs> because yes, we do have root tips, but there's nothing that needs to fill any gaps or anything like that. She has her own tiny little mask, but I have some work to do with that one yet so that it'll hold water. So we're just gonna flush her through. And I'll be doing this every day, depending on how dry my environment is. Maybe every two days. I just don't want anything to dry out at the surface because, yay, let's get those roots in the pot. And then in 2025, it's possible that we're gonna enjoy her beautiful, fragrant blooms again. I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't find anything relevant in the pot that could explain the phenomenon that was happening outside of the pot. I would have loved to have given you some drama, <laughs> but for my orchid, this is the better outcome. So please consider giving this video a like, and if you have not subscribed to the channel, oh, please consider subscribing. It would be wonderful to have you on board. Despite no drama, I can tell you that I'm thrilled. <laughs> this has been an eyesore. I just don't like looking at an orchid that is struggling, and yet I have to be patient and wait until it is the right time to intervene. Now I feel much better. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I thank you for carving out a little bit of time out of your day to be here on the patio. Thank you for your time. Have a fabulous day, please. But on that one condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.